So today we're going to write a sax soli for five saxophones, the same sort of setup that you would have in a typical jazz big band. And uh, first, we're going to need to have a melody from which to harmonize. So I'm going to write a little melody out here. Here. Um, yeah. And we're going to harmonize this in block voicings. Um, this is the sort of most basic way that you can really approach harmonizing a melody with saxophones or any series of instruments. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to copy this lead alto line down to the very sax like this, and we're going to move it down an octave. And the reason why we do this is because when you harmonize um, a group of five instruments, typically in jazz there are four note voicings, like A minor 7 for instance is a four note chord, and you have five instruments. So the easiest way of dealing with this is just to have one instrument play the same melody down an octave. So what do we do with the rest of the instruments? Well, we're going to copy and paste that same line and then we're going to change all these notes. Now you notice that this is a concert score. If I was going to do a transposing score, it would look like this. This is actually what the instruments and what the players read. Um, alto sax is a transposing instrument, I think at a minor sixth. Tenor sax is at a minor or major ninth. Um, so basically the notes that they're playing end up sounding like this, but they look like this to them. And you can see that the lead alto line is nice and high in the register, which is where we want it. That's awesome. So um, this is probably not a great line for a tenor player to play. That E is kind of high, and Sibelius is telling you, no, don't write that note. That is a bad note to write. And I'll be like, okay, well, let's change it. So the first thing, we're going to add some chords. So this is going to be an A minor 7. This is going to be... Uh, see a D7, and this one's going to be a G major 7. 2, 5, fun. <laughs> Joke. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to spell each one of these chords out down from the melody note. So this is an A, so we're going to spell out A minor 7 down from A. So the next note below A would be the 7th, which is a G. Next note below G is the 5th, which is an E. Next note below that E would be a C. Yay! Okay, so that's an A minor 7 chord. All right, first note done. We got a couple more to go. So the next note would be a B. Now you notice that B is not really a note in an A minor 7 chord, strictly speaking. It is the ninth. Um, but you, the functionally, that's not really what the B is doing. The B is a passing tone in between the A and the C here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to voice out this A minor 7 on the C. So that's going to be C, A, G, E. Then what we're going to do is we're going to treat that B as if it is a temporary E7 chord. And that's a really useful sort of trick, useful sort of technique to think about passing tones, is to think about the rel uh, related five to whatever chord that you're doing. So B is the fifth of an E7 chord. G sharp is the third. E is the root. And then D is the seventh. Now there's a bit of a problem right here in the tenor voice. Um, you don't really want to have repeated notes when you're doing these solely, just because it sort of it ruins the flow. Basically, the tenor player is going to have to rearticulate that E, and it sort of mucks the whole thing up. And it's actually not really fun to play for the tenor player. So what we're going to do is instead of an E, we're actually going to change that to an F sharp. And the reason why we like an F sharp is, well, we're sort of thinking of this now as the ninth of the chord, and it's also this nice same melodic movement by step as we have in the lead voice. Great, awesome. Okay, so now we have this D. All right, so remember what I said about passing tones, uh, we think about the related five. Now here is the little bit of a rub. We're targeting, when we think about that passing tone, we target the next tone, like this. This B is targeting that C. This D really isn't targeting anything. And if we're using classical terminology, this is what's actually called an escape tone. So it's moving away from a chord tone, and then it's resolving down to another chord that's changing. So we're actually just going to think about this as a, uh, I don't know, a diatonic passing escape. I don't know, I'm just making up terminology right now, but basically all we do is we just think about whatever the next note is in, this, in the key. So A moves up to B, G moves up to A, E moves up to F sharp, and voila, we now have a B minor 7 chord. And that's really all the justification that we need. B minor 7 sounds pretty good in the key of G, in which we are working. Okay, what about D7? Now we get a B7 
B right here, which isn't a uh, chord tone, but it's also definitely not a passing tone. We really, we land on the beat here and it's pretty emphasized. Uh, so we're gonna think about this as a tension. We're gonna think about this as the 13th of a D7 chord. Um, and whenever we think about tensions, we substitute them when we're spelling them down from the uh, lowest or the next chord tone down from underneath them. So in other words, this B, which is the 13th, is sort of representing five, the A. So this is a quote A. So the next note underneath, underneath that would be an F sharp. Next note underneath that would be a D. And the next note underneath that would be an, a C. Now uh, we could eh, let's let's have some fun. Let's uh, replace this D with a related tension. So remember that tensions sort of are the next one up. So D uh, E would be the tension nine, the ninth right here. Um, we could also potentially just if we're having some fun with it, because why not? Jazz is fun, right? That's what they told me in school. E flat. Flat nine. All right. So now this D7 has become this beefy flat nine 13 chord. Awesome. Okay. So the next tone right here. So we have a G. Hmm. It becomes a little bit of a problem because G doesn't really work all too well with D7 if we're just trying to voice a D7 underneath that. So let's ignore that for right now. Let's pretend that's another passing tone. Let's just sort of focus on the A, a right here, which is uh, an anticipation of this G major seven chord. All right. Okay. So A, let's pretend. Uh, that's the ninth, or that is the ninth. Let's pretend that's the root for the purposes of spelling down a uh, closed position chord. All right, so that's the root. The seventh would be F sharp. Okay, then the fifth would be D. And then what's the, uh, that's the third. Awesome. Okay, that's gonna sound pretty nice. A, F sharp, uh, D, B. Groovy. Okay, so let's go move backwards. So we said that this doesn't really work with the D7. Remember, for the passing tones, we normally think about the five of the chord, but this is the four on the dominant seventh chord. It doesn't really work out so well. So we're going to do that sort of trick that we did with this D. We're just going to take the next note right underneath and see if that works and see if that's going to sound good. So E is right underneath F sharp. G is right, on, or sorry, C is right underneath, underneath D, and A is underneath. Okay, cool. All right, so we just get an A minor seven. That's probably gonna sound fine, right? It's cool. All right, um, so there's one final little tiny little detail that I need to mention. Um, you notice here on this very first chord, uh, we have a G and an A. Typically, you really do not wanna have a second in between the top voice and the voice immediately below that. Um, it's it's okay uh, in certain times, um, and on the Sibelius playback, it's gonna be okay, but uh, when you're actually playing with real instruments, this can be a little bit of a crunch. It can be a little bit too dissonant, f uh, muddy, unclear. It's basically not going to sound great as is. So typically when we do A minor 7 or minor 7s, we'll change, if the root's in the melody, we'll change that 7th to the 6th and make it temporarily a minor 6th chord. And that sort of relieves the uh, that crunch right there. And now we have a minor 3rd on the top and it's not going to be quite as nasty sounding. All right, are you ready to hear it? I know I am. Pressing play right now. That sounds like jazz. 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 